The first half of the 20th century saw the rise of many dictators who would commit atrocious crimes throughout Asia, Africa and Europe. Today we will explore the drug abuse of probably the most famous of these tyrants. Hello there. My name is Sian Tristan and today we're going to take a look at Adolf Hitler. And damn, I've probably chosen a very bad timing to do a face reveal. But whatever, let's roll with it. So the man who gave Adolf Hitler his medicine was Theodor Morel. Adolf had multiple doctors, but Morel was pretty much the only, let's say, interesting one because he was the most famous and he was the one who really gave some of the worst stuff to the guy. Theodore was an expert on ventral diseases and he used to work on a ship. In 1936, Theodore helped a uh, cameraman who was working for Hitler. His reward was going on a dinner in Venice where Hitler happened to be. The Führer mentioned to the doctor that he had a stomach disease which pretty much forced him to be vegetarian slash vegan. By the way, this is ironic because later on the doctor would administer all kinds of, let's just call it animal products to the guy and... Um, yeah, not very vegan. The doctor prescribes Hitler with Mutafluor. And was Mutafluor? And Mutafluor is pretty much a capsule with inside of it bacteria that came from the intestines of an officer from World War I. And that was supposed to help against his stomach aches. I find that very creative medicine, to say the least. Hitler was so impressed that Morel became his personal physician. Which my main source calls the beginning of their toxic relationship. Which I just find very ironic and I'll link the article down below if I don't forget it. Morel started giving Hitler power injections with uh, glucose and vitamins. But but in reality it actually contained pervetin. Pervetin or pervetin, however you want to call it. Was a acceptable form of taking crystal meth during uh, that time. People just took it right before they went marching or before they cleaned house or anything like that. And um, yeah. Also something fun about Morel, he was not very good at sterilizing needles, so um, that's pretty much the first thing that you learn when you start working in a laboratory. So I find that very interesting to say the least, that if you cannot do that right then maybe don't become a doctor. After the seller that Morel bought his um, medicine from started to charge way too much according to him, uh, Morel decided to start making his own medicine. And if you cannot sterilize needles, then once again, maybe you should not make your own medicine. Maybe you're not that qualified for that at that point. But the doctor also did some nice things. When uh, Hitler and Hermann Göring and some other higher Nazi officials were debating with the president of Czechoslovakia, and Hermann Göring mentioned that the plan was pretty much to bombard Prague, then the Prime Minister pretty much fainted. And Dr. Morel was right there to help him back on his feet. So once again, that's very nice of him. Fast forward to 1941. Things did not go so well in Russia. Hitler felt so bad that the doctors decided to just give him an injectum of vitamultin, which is basically speed, uh, calcium and glyconorm. Now, what is glyconorm? Um, it's a steroidal hormone that's derived from the intestines, mainly the liver and other things like that, from farm animals. So that's not very vegan of you. He also started giving the mustache man barbiturates, which sedate the central nervous system and help against things like seizures, anxiety and other stuff like that. He also took doping, but I'm not sure which kind of doping agents he took. May have been amphetamine, but the pervitin that he was already taken was already more powerful than that, so it may have been, but I don't think that it would have been quite as effective, but yeah. In the year 1943, Hitler had a stomach ache the day before meeting Mussolini, which also happened to be a patient of Morales. The cure was Eudocol, which contains uh, oxycodin. This molecule is a cousin of heroin and is more euphoric than heroin. It also has twice the painkilling capabilities of morphine. If you take it regularly enough and over a short enough period of time, then it may also change the way you perceive reality or just mess up some things in your brain, which if you're the leader of a country, you probably should not take it at that point. But Hitler did. He had taken the drug about 24 times in his lifetime, but it's unclear if it was just 24 times. It may have been more since Morel's uh, notes about Hitler were vague and unprofessional. 
The next drug was, maybe you guessed it, cocaine. At the time, in Germany, it was pretty much seen as a Jewish drug, but Hitler still took it about 50 times, and he did not take a small amount either. On October 1st, in 1944, Hitler even took an overdose and went knockout. Yeah, fun. According to Normal Oler, Hitler's veins were completely ruined from on the opioid injections that he had to endure. Here's a fun list of everything that he happened to take. Finally, Morell gave Göring and some other high-ranking military officials in Germany their cyanide pills to take in the last days of the Third Reich. Well, that's pretty much the end of the video. If you made it this far, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something, or at least enjoyed yourself.